Hello everyone and welcome to Knit Chat. I am Liz, I'm with the Poppy Library. I'm coming from uh, Central Texas and this is a an episode where I chat about what I'm knitting, my current projects, projects I'm excited about, yarn, um, really anything to deal with knitting or a cross section of knitting. I'm also a stained glass artist and am currently making a collection of stained glass art that I will be selling this fall um, that is themed around knitting as well. So um, I really just kind of wanted to say hi to everybody and thank you for all of the kind words on all my stained glass pieces that I have been making that are knitting themed and um, it's been really nice to hear everyone's um, praise on those pieces. As an artist, I am particularly um, sensitive when it comes to putting things out there um, to share um, just because of all the work that it takes and all the thought process. So it's really, really nice um, to hear all of your encouraging words. Thank you guys so much. And honestly, this episode is really just to chat all about my works and things that I've been doing to share with you all. Um, I really have loved all the conversations that I've had around different projects that I'm doing um, and the community that is building around the Poppy Library is very exciting and this is just to continue that on. So without further ado, uh, let's talk about current projects. I work a nine to five job along with all the other things that I do and I, um, with that in mind, I also am a slow knitter-ish, meaning I will pick up my project when I feel motivated to do so. If I'm having a rough day or I really need to rest and just decompress, I sometimes won't pick up my knitting. And also it's really freaking hot outside. So um, it's hard to want to knit in those kinds of conditions. Um, someone who's living in central Texas it's about 100 degrees every afternoon since I think um, May, end of May, so uh, it sucks when it, it's really hot. Um, but luckily we have AC, so that's great. Okay, so my project pile is right here and I'm just gonna grab and go here, but I have currently been knitting uh, the Perennial Sweater by Nora, Nora Gone uh, in the Worsted book by La Bien Ami, and um, I've been working on this project I think maybe for about two months. It's all knitted flat. If you saw my notes from a knitter uh, episode um, where I, it's more of a theatrical kind of presentation of what I'm knitting and stories behind things that I've learned. Um, this is knit flat and so um, <laughs> talk about that in a second. It's knit flat. It's quite a beautiful pattern. It has um, cabling in it as well. So it looks a little something like this. This is the back and this is the front. So it's my first pattern where I am knitting in, um, knitting all the parts flat. So um, knitting the arms flat, meaning back and forth, and then also knitting the front and the back flat as well. Um, and then you uh, put all the pieces together, you seam them together, and then you knit the collar to complete the project. I um, am in the process of seaming everything together. I got very excited and ambitious as as uh, one usually does, meaning me. I usually am <laughs> very ambitious and I just want to kind of jump ahead and rush projects a lot. Um, knitting has taught me to not do that. And a uh, prime example right here where I have tried to knit uh, the front and the back first, I'm sorry, seam the front and the back first. And um, without doing any research on how to seam or um, how to put together a sweater that is knit in different parts, a uh, mistake. Definitely a mistake. I have to go and undo all my hour, well, I would say it was probably about an hour's worth of work. Um, it's fine. Uh, so I did some research on YouTube. Thank God for a uh, very pink knits who uh, pretty much teaches everything you need to know about anything knitting related. I watched all of her videos um, from probably about eight years ago. She uploaded them on how to seam a sweater like this together 
and it looks extremely easy and very pleasant, um, like a very pleasant experience, which this one was not. Um, trying to do this without knowing what I'm doing. I just probably wouldn't do that again. So um, the reason why I'm um, ripping it out or just starting over in the seaming is because, you know, um, I am using for this project uh, La Bien Amis Cori Worsted. Let's see if you can see that. So the Cori Worsted um, yarn in lease and uh, La Bien Amis. It's the, the cutest branding. I'm a really big fan of very nice branding, and this is very nice branding. Um, it's the Curry Worsted Lease. Um, this yarn is luxurious. I want to be sure to um, do the sweater justice by knitting it right and being extremely happy with the outcome. In the past, I haven't done that, so I just want to take the time, the extra time to do that. And so I will be seaming this up. Uh, this week in my free time in the afternoons when I'm done with my nine to five and um, Then hopefully by the end of the week or the beginning of next week. I will have a beautiful knitted sweater um, with this beautiful yarn and One really special thing about this is that I for one I taught myself to knit during the uh, pandemic and then probably two years beforehand so I've just been an ongoing I look back and I think I've been knitting for like three or four years, which is crazy to me. It's just gone by so fast. But um, really during the pandemic, I really dove deep into knitting because, you know, what else are you going to do? And um, I really fell in love with different makers and everything. So um, La Bien, or sorry, Amy or Ami, I didn't clarify how she likes to pronounce her name, but um, she came to our little yarn shop here in Austin, one of my favorites, which is Hill Country Weavers. I'm actually going there tomorrow, very excited. And um, she came in and did like her book tour and she was there with all these samples. And this sweater was one of the samples and I got to meet her and she was very nice, very sweet, sweet woman. And just everything that, um, of course, I was just fan girling over her. So uh, everything that I expected, um, her personality to be, she exceeded that. Um, she's so kind, so gracious. She let me try on this sweater. She pulled the yarn for me, which was so nice of her. Um, and then um, also kind of helped me figure out what other project I wanted to do from the book. So it was really sweet. And so this is why uh, this project is really special and I just want to do it justice. So, um, so yeah, that is the uh, perennial sweater by Noragon with uh, La Bien Amis, uh yarn, uh, worsted. In her, and the pattern is in her worsted book as well. And uh, this this yarn is like, I was really expecting it to be very um, like scratchy. It's not. It's actually very soft and squishy. And that's one thing that I expressed to her when I was trying on these samples. Um, was that you know, it's just I it wasn't what I expected. So I'm very excited to uh, finish finish this guy. All right. One project that I've been working on for quite some time is uh, my uh, faded socks. Um, I completed one sock. This is one of the socks. I knit one last year with um, Shirley Bryan Yarns um, yarn, which I'm a huge fan of. It's a deconstructed fade sock and her branding is also on point. I just, if you have great branding, I'm probably gonna buy your yarn. <laughs> it's really all it takes for me. This is just like, does the label look great? Great, I will try it. Um, but look at that label. It's a little, it's a little um, velociraptor. Oh my God, dinosaurs. Veloso, velocir, raptor, it's a raptor. Why? I have no brain capacity to remember dinosaurs. It's terrible. Um, but I bought this yarn specifically because of the name which is brilliant. It is based on Jurassic Park. It's called uh, Man Man Brings Back Dinosaur, Dinosaur Eats Man, Woman Inherits the Earth, which is a key little line uh, from Jurassic Park. Hilarious. I love it. Um, so I knit one of these um, socks last year, I believe, and um, all it is is just like a tube sock and it fades, uh, the yarn fades naturally, which is great um, and beautiful. And it's fun when you're knitting it, you're, you're just constantly knitting and then all of a sudden it changes colors in your hands and it's like, wow, 
oh, that's great. Um, this yarn is great for sock knitting. Um, it is a fingering weight um, slash sock weight yarn. It's 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon. And the skein that it comes with, I believe it comes with two skeins, and uh, you wind it up and it comes with, let me grab it out of my Frida back here. And this is how it winds up, which is really cute. And you get to see all the colors while you're winding it up, like kind of fade in to each other. Um, so it comes with two skeins, you wind them up and then you just go at it. You just start, I start from the toe and then I work my way up and um, I completed one sock after a big project and then after this project I'm going to complete the other one. So that is my technically second work in progress. One of them's done, need another one. Um, I have found that I wore this, the other sock that I knit, um, all the time. I wore it all the time last year when it was cold. Um, where I work, I'm sometimes out in the elements and um, it just kept my feet so warm and cozy and it was also really nice at night, you know, when I'm sitting by the fire and because um, it can get pretty cold here for us Texans. <laughs> um, so, uh, so yeah, I'm just really excited to knit the next one and it's also really squishy and very versatile. Um, I haven't found any um, sort of like serious pilling with this yarn um, since with the other socks that I have. Um, I've worn them in boots and everything and they've gotten kind of like, they've definitely been worn a lot. So I'm very pleased that the yarn kind of just really keeps its um, quality while you wear them. So I'm excited about these. Okay, so um, works in progress. So just gonna kind of talk about stained glass a little bit because technically my collection is a work in progress. I am very obsessed with knitting and obviously, and I have um, a stained glass business and I decided this year I was really going to um, do, I wanted to do a collection of stained glass themed or knitting themed stained glass. <laughs> so uh, I kind of started last year um, with the beginning of the collection. So I did a knit and a purl, and I'm kind of wondering where my knit one is. I don't know where it is. I think it might be under a shelf or something. But this is, um, I did like a knit and a purl kind of window with this beautiful um, glass that is uh, multicolored, and I kind of separate it. It's one sheet of glass, and then um, it comes in this kind of like fade um, throughout the glass, which kind of reminded me of like fades with uh, yarn. So I did a knit and this is the pearl and they have two hooks and you can kind of hang it on your wall. I do plan on hanging mine kind of back here um, for the show and illuminating them from the back, but I might have to just kind of build a little uh, light box behind it if I want it on a shelf. But right now it just sits on my window um, over here. And I just finished um, kind of what started this whole obsession of doing a, a knit themed stained glass. Why does it take my brain to separate those words? But a knit themed stained glass collection, um, which was this one. It's down here. And this is the one I just, sorry, start over. This is the one I just completed. Excuse my hair. It's, I do need a haircut fix the hair break, hair break. Okay, so what started this obsession, um, or this thought in my head to do a knit theme stained glass collection, um, was that I had a um, hunter green yarn that I really wanted to do a raglan uh, sweater in, and it's also a Le <laughs> Am I obsessed with Le Probably. Um, great colors and dye lots. Anyway, um, I still haven't knitted the sweater yet, but I do plan on doing that this year, but I wanted to kind of visualize it first to see, you know, what I like it in raglan, and I thought, why not do like a little mock-up with stained glass, because I can do that. Um, and so I made this guy right here. Um, isn't she pretty? 
So I do plan on selling these in the fall. I will have pre-orders available, and I will also take pictures of the glass that this can come in, meaning the glass that the sweater can come in. I think I'm gonna leave the back the same, which is an oil. Um, it's called an it's called an oil glass because it kind of looks like an oil. If you can kind of see how it distorts my reflection behind it. Um, it is kind of like an oily glass base, um, but I will be doing different uh, colors and you'll be able to pre-order, um, you know, what kind of border you want and also pre-order um, what kind of sweater glass that you want as well. So that is part of the collection. Um, this is one part of the collection. So. I'm excited about these. This is gonna be um, available for pre-order next month, um, so September, and I'm hoping to get everything out by October, November, so um, you have a chance to gift these for the holidays or just gift them for yourself. Treat yourself, right? Yeah, I'm pretty proud of this. Um, the little details on here are, I'm just gonna stand behind it, um, but um, you, if you can see it, but I do uh, paint on the little stitching um, stitch markers on it and the little um, ribbing and then also down here as well so I'm really excited about these it's so pretty um, yeah more de more details to come on that so moving on to future projects that's a nice little segue into future projects moving all my sweater stuff over I am going to do another sweater from La Bianami's book, which, one second, let me grab it. So I'm going to do another um, sweater from this book, which this is the worst book, and obviously the branding, hello, caught my eye, had to buy it. Also, this is my favorite tone of yellow. It's beautiful. If I, I had my front door painted this at my old house. Um, I kind of want to do it again, I miss this color such a beautiful color. Um, so the next project I'm going to knit out of this book, which is another sample that I tried on, is stratified. So without showing the pattern, it's stratified right here. And I'm super excited about it. It's a stripy sweater, which I may or may not be, I tried on the sample, it looked great. I need to shut up about it. It's gonna look great. On me, I usually don't have stripes that are um, horizontal on me. Um, I'm kind of a curvy Latina lady, so um, it's not the most flattering. But I tried on the sample and it looked absolutely beautiful, and it made me feel good about myself. So I'm going to do it. So here is a, a little bit, kind of like a teaser of that um, sweater. It's really, really beautiful. Let's see if I can find another picture. Here we go, here's the other picture. I don't wanna share the knitting actual pattern, but there is the picture right there. Very excited about it. I am also gonna be knitting that in uh, the Curry Worsted because, you know, what was great when she visited my little yarn shop was that um, she was there to pick up my yarn and she looked at me and she was like this is what size you need this is what size you are this is how much yarn you need and she picked it all out and I was like whoa I felt like a VIP it's so great about meeting designers like that they can just pick out the yarn for you so these are the colors that I will be knitting um, so this is another investment piece. This is definitely an heirloom kind of situation where I will be, I will have this for many, many years to come and um, wear it all the time kind of thing. Um, so I have the color, oh, I don't even want to try to say these. These are the colors. <laughs> I'll put them in the show notes so you can see which ones they are. I will also link to where you can buy them and support my little yarn shop, Hill Country Weavers, as well. So there will be links to buy it directly from them below and um, supporting local businesses, especially the ones I love and I go to and keeping them in business, especially in a very expensive city um, that 
just keeps growing and is extremely popular, I want to make sure that they stay in business. Those folks who work at um, Hill Country Weavers are extremely talented and super, super gracious and patient and answer all your questions and they're very kind and so I just want to make sure that they stay in business forever. It's actually, I think, it's actually, I think, one of like the longest, um, one of the oldest little yarn shops, I think, in Texas. They've been around for quite some time. Okay, so talking more about yarn. So we talked about future projects. Right now, that's the only kind of future project I want to think about at the moment. Um, I don't want to overwhelm myself because that sweater is going to take some time too. But again, palette cleanser, if I need a palette cleanser, um, I have another, I bought another um, Shirley Bryan Yarns um, sock set. And this is um, Winter is Coming, which um, Game of Thrones fan right here. So uh, very, very um, excited about this one as well, uh, especially since the new... Um, Game of Thrones theme, or I guess, what do you call it? Like a, an off series, an offshoot of a series? Oh God, what do you call it? I don't know what you call it. Sub-series? No. I'll figure it out. Um, House of Dragon, or Dragon, be fancy, call it Dragon, is premiering, I think, next month. And I'm a huge Game of Thrones fan, and so I'm excited to see that series. And these are going to be little nice theme socks um, for that. So I'm excited about that. Pattern to come on that. And um, last kind of acquisition that I've had in the past few months. This is, by the way, this isn't me buying all of the, not that it freaking matters, but this isn't me buying all of this yarn at once. This is like months and months of acquiring things, and I... I'm strategically picking what I buy and the quality of yarn that I buy because I want to invest in these pieces for a long time. Anyway, um, one of my favorite yarn dyers and the kindest person in the entire world who promotes a lot of or shares a lot of the things that I do, which is so kind. Um, she has a platform of her own and she shares my stuff and it's just so nice to share her community with me and I absolutely love her. Uh, Taylor with Fiber for the People. I did a little reel on this one, uh, kind of an unboxing reel, uh, because I, it's like gifting things to myself. So it's, I like keeping that as a memory. And so I video, I videoed that, uh, my little mini music videos that I put on my Instagram. But this is Fiber for the People. It's a uh, hundred percent super wash blue face Lester, um, sport weight yarn in Sapphire. So it's a beautiful, deep blue, um, Kind of it matches my wedding ring so um, I have sapphires in my wedding ring my little chunky hands and my pff, wedding ring I know right hello my husband did great so uh, so yeah I'm so happy to um, finally purchase yarn from her um, her hand dyed yarn and also I plan on knitting a shawl in this um, because Blacks look really great, or darker colors look really great close to my skin in the winter time. So super excited about this. And um, I knit my friend Kate a shawl recently, uh, meaning last year <laughs> at Christmas time, I knit her a shawl in a uh, blue face Lester, Lester yarn. And uh, it came out beautiful and I love the texture and I love knitting with it. So I had to get another something and so I'm, I'm so happy to support Fiber for the People. I love all of her videos that she puts out and finally excited to be able to purchase something from her shop. And lastly, um, not really an acquisition, but an ongoing project of mine is I'm a huge fan of the holidays. Um, just, I think I'm a huge fan of cool weather and with cool weather brings the holidays. Um, I really hate the heat, which is a shocker because I live... I live here in um, in Central Texas, and it's just hot most of the time. I don't mind it sometimes, but I'm really excited when uh, when winter comes around. Um, and with that, last year, what I did a project that I had started last year um, was I knit tiny little sweaters with all of the fingering weight yarn that I use throughout the year. So it was kind of like um, 
a nice little scrapbook of all the yarns that I used, but also a nice little kind of ornament situation for a Christmas tree. Um, so I had a little mini tree and then I, I did all that. I did all these little sweaters and I hung them on the tree. So the, this is all of the fingering weight yarn that I used last year. Let's see if you can, like, I mean, how stinking cute are these little guys? Oh, this one's my favorite. This is Dragon Horde yarn. How cute is she? Knit socks in this. Um, this is what used to be Chasing Rabbits. Now is, oh, I forget her, um, again, in the show notes, she changed her brand because somebody had Chasing Rabbits and made her change her, her brand, which was shitty, but she had to do it. Um, this one, this is the, the blue faced luster, um, yarn that I knit my friend's shawl with. So just, I plan on, um, continuing this tradition, um, as well this year. So if you're interested, you can, we can start a little knit along. Maybe we should start a knit along, um, where you just casually just knit these little sweaters. I'll share the pattern that I use. It's a, it's a pattern that's been on Ravelry for quite some time, quite forever, in like forever. I, I got it I when I first started knitting because I would really wanted to do it. Um, look at that one. I don't even think I knit anything with this. I just wanted to see what it looked like in a, in a raglan, which is a good idea. If you want to knit a little raglan, but you want to see what that yarn looks like as a sweater, knit a little tiny sweater. Then you can see what it looks like. Uh, it makes me want to this is a leftover kind of like stash buster that I had and look at that, that's so pretty. So I'll be doing that with all my little leftovers this year again and we'll start a little knit along and I'll start it on Ravelry, I'll put a link and everything so we can kind of just casually do that throughout the year. Um, these things take like, I mean me, it took me like an hour to just knit this like without being inter interrupted. It does take me a little bit longer. I do get distracted. I have ADD, so I get distracted kind of easily. So that would be it in terms of things I wanted to share um, of works in progress and such. Um, I don't have a finished object yet. I should probably get going on that. Um, but this year I will be going to uh, the Northeast and experiencing my first Rhinebeck. I've always wanted to do it ever since I started knitting um, and going up north and meeting a whole bunch of makers and yarn dyers that I absolutely love and seeing all the sheep, which I'm very excited about. Uh, yeah, seeing all the sheep really. And maybe it'll be cooler. If it's cool at night, I will take it. I don't care. Um, so I will be at Woolen Folk and seeing and experiencing that festival as an attendee. So if you are going and if you are attending, I would love to hear about it in the comments um, and meet up with you. Um, I'm new to this knitting community, meaning I'm new to um, kind of just diving headfirst into meeting new people in this community and reaching out. Um, I really, really want to build a community of my own and so I would really love to know who's going and if we can meet up for some coffee or whatever, meet up at the festival and just knit for a little bit, I would love to get to know you better. So if you're going, let me know and I will see you there and I'm so excited. So, so that's all I have for today. I'm excited to try this again, try this again, try talking again to the camera. It's kind of weird sitting in a room or you're just looking at a camera by yourself and talking to yourself, but really I'm talking to all of you. So it's kind of a little mind, mind trick for me. <laughs> um, I'm excited to share um, my stained glass collection with you. More um, news to come on that. If you don't follow me on Instagram, that's where I share a lot of that info. Um, I will be posting a lot more in the next uh, few months. And so you can find all of those details, how to pre-order uh, stained glass coming up in the next few weeks. Um, all of the new stained glass collection um, will be shared there as well. I have probably about four different styles of pieces that you can choose from, maybe five. And um, I will also be doing an artist show here in uh, Austin where I live um, and that'll be coming up in the next few months. So if you're local here, you can come and visit my studio. Um, but yeah, so this is my little knitting studio. 
Uh, just a quick little share on this. I split um, half of this room is you cannot see because it's also a freaking mess. But half of this studio is uh, my stained glass studio and I have all my glass and glass supplies and this is where I create everything. And then this half is all of my knitting supplies. Um, it's very exciting to have my own space. I do plan maybe one day of building a new space in my backyard, like my own private studio, that is my dream. And it would be so nice to just move all the glass out there and then just keep the knitting in here or maybe turn this into a guest room with knitting stuff. We'll see. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me and I'm so excited to continue to chat with you. I appreciate you watching. Um, it would be so nice if you subscribe to my channel um, and maybe share this video with someone that you know that would enjoy it. I look forward to growing this community more and chatting with you more. So until next time, bye.